Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to take you through 21, maybe more, it's it's a bit difficult to quantify, different fuse combinations with shields in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And more importantly, what they do. This is by no means an exhaustive list, so if you've discovered something that we haven't, please let us know with a comment down below. Do be aware that this video will contain minor gameplay and environmental spoilers. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling, let's dive right into things. Let's start off by talking about different ways that you can get around, some using shield surfing, but not all. One of the first things you might think of is to strap a rocket to your shield, and yeah, you can just hold the ZL button and you'll yeet yourself upwards and that is damn handy, but what about if you shield surf with it? Well, it's a bit disappointing. <laughs> It's a bit unreliable, it's short-lived, it doesn't do an awful lot. Uh, it's it's just better to use other things. There are other things that will do better with shield surfing. It's a shame as well. I mean, it's okay if you're on one of those minecart rails, you're grinding along it, but even then, it didn't fill us with surprise. But what about a bomb flower? Yeah, you can strap a bomb flower to your shield and let an enemy attack it and oh, kaboom and all that, but if you shield surf, wee! And if you shield surf with a time bomb, Whee! In a similar way, if you put a spring on the front and you shield surf onto it, you'll get a nice little boost. It's it's not quite as good as the bomb, I feel. I don't know whether it's actually like a lower bounce, but it feels lower, um, but it does give an excellent noise. <laughs> shield surfing with a card, that's the Zonai device. Don't like try and attach a, a horse-drawn carriage or anything to that. It, it won't work. But slapping a card on allows you to essentially create, <laughs> for all intents and purposes, a skateboard. And this this isn't just for looks, this will actually allow you to go further and more importantly, over rougher terrain than you would be able to otherwise if you were just shield surfing. Like genuinely, this is a really good combo and I've I've used it a lot. You can also use a minecart, which is uh, similar, but your center of gravity is a lot higher, which doesn't seem to really affect things, but I don't know, you, you can't really carry minecarts around with you. So uh, I don't know. I, it, it doesn't do it for me. But what does do it for me is getting an ice block, which you can create by just like throwing an ice fruit into a body of water, and you create one of these sort of like little sort of slabs of ice and sweet baby beans, they are good. Because it's ice and ice is a slippery sausage, the friction is basically like it's basically zero. You can shield surf for days and if you snake back and forth to try and sort of maintain your momentum, it's even better. I, like this is, I think, I, I don't know because I haven't tested it, but I think this is like arguably the best way to shield surf, like the most consistent, the smoothest, the fastest. I don't know that, but I certainly get that sensation. The only problem is, is that ice melts, and after a while, it will just disappear, and durability doesn't seem to be great either. Fun while it lasts, but it sadly doesn't last forever. A sled is a reasonable alternative to an ice block. It's not as good, but it is more consistent. It doesn't melt in the sun. Particularly good around snowy areas. Yeah, this is this is a pretty good shout. If you try and shield surf with a fan, you'll just you'll just tumble. You you'll just tumble. But what about when you're in the air? I mean, surely like, that looks like it's doing something, doesn't it? But sadly, we've actually done tests and it doesn't. It's a real shame. How much fun would it be if doing this actually meant you went further or maybe fell more slowly? That would be amazing. But <sighs> Sadly, it's just not the case. If you want to go old school, you can put an octo balloon on your shield. Whee. Let's talk about combat. Now, you've probably put a gemstone on the end of a wand or a sword and gone, wow, I can create a wand. And you're right, but did you know you can also put them on a shield? Ooh. Parrying into enemies doesn't seem to do anything, but if an enemy attacks you, it's not as impressive as attaching it to an arrow, but even so, this is genuinely quite a handy little thing to have on. I I highly recommend. Putting a spring on is absolutely hilarious and genuinely quite useful if you want to keep, keep enemies at a distance. 
it's genuinely quite handy and it doesn't just disappear after one use. It's repeatable and it's amazing and it makes this noise. You might be tempted to fuse a shield onto a shield and think, oh, that'll increase its like defense or its durability or something. But unfortunately, as far as we can tell, it doesn't do anything. Durability stays the same and so does defensive power. I mean, the game even makes it obvious. So you can fuse a shield to a shield, but there's very little point, but the crowning achievement of defensive fuse play with shields is attaching a mirror to it. Now you might sort of think, oh, what's that going to do? Deflect attacks or anything? No. It reflects the sunlight and dazzles your opponents as though you've thrown a dazzle fruit at them. I mean, the mirror shield is back, baby. It exists. It exists in Tears of the Kingdom. Getting on the offensive side of combat, there's I like some obvious ones like any of the emitters, like the flame, frost, or beam, or shock ones. Like, yeah, they will create, like, beams and plumes of fire and stuff. I mean, that much, it, it's obvious. It's obvious, but it's still pretty cool. But what's less obvious is that you can fuse any weapon you like to a shield, or indeed any horn as well. It all works. Anything that you would usually just like fuse to another weapon to improve it, you can slap it on a shield and boy howdy, if you parry into enemies, it'll, it'll hurt them. It'll hurt them hard. We've actually done an entire video about this, so I'm not gonna go into massive detail, but the idea of having like an offhand elemental attack is super useful. And I, I highly recommend using like stones, like the shock like stone or the ice like stone, because they, oh, Oh lordy. They're not massively useful on their own, but sticking them on a shield, just going up to a bunch of enemies and just like going blare with electricity, it's, oh, it's something else. And you don't feel you're wasting anything elemental because what were you going to use the like stones for anyway? And lastly, bows. Yes, you can stick them on shields. No, they don't do anything except look particularly silly. We've got a few more left that are more of just sort of like marginal interest than anything else. Um, you, you can stick a coarser bee honey hive to it and when you get your shield out, B bees appear. It's fun, but it's not all that useful. And once it's happened once, the, the sort of the, the thrill does sort of diminish a bit, which is sad but true. Nintendo themselves have shown off how you can slap a push shroom to a shield and it, when an enemy attacks it, it goes poof and you know, all that sort of thing. And you can do the same with a muddle bud, but it's just a different way to like make the effect happen that we already understand. So although it's useful, it's not like ultra interesting, but I still felt I should mention it. I had the bright idea, if you'll pardon the pun, of slapping a bright cap onto a shield, and yes, it does glow, but so unbelievably faintly as to be completely useless. Like, it lights you up, but like, that's it. Using Ultra Hand or Fuse actually produced more light, which um, was also, uh, it turns out, a really handy technique if you really have run out of bright blooms, which... I mean, never run out of bright blooms. And finally, if you slap a bird egg onto a shield and shield surf onto it, it breaks. And there you have it. Have you discovered something that we haven't? Let us know with a comment down below. But for now, all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you slap it to that subscribe button and realize that the Korok front still doesn't do anything. And be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh,